UV mapping. It is an extremely important part of 3D modeling, but also fairly misunderstood. So let's start with the main question here. What is UV mapping? UV mapping is the process of applying a 2D texture to a 3D object. This is done through a UV editing section where the mesh is broken out and laid flat. Or for the mathematical people out there, it is essentially like a net. This is how we get textures onto 3D objects, because your computer doesn't know how you want to apply the texture, so we need to give it that information by specifying it through a UV map. If you are still a little bit unsure of UV mapping, I have put a few links in the description where you can read up on it a bit more to get a full understanding of the topic. Now that we know what UV mapping is, the next question is, how do we do it? So in this tutorial video, we are going to start off with a cube but I will then move on to a more advanced 3D model just to give you the best of both worlds. So I have a random brick texture here. It looks a little bit off. I want the texture to be rotated without rotating the cube itself and I also want the bricks to be a bit smaller on this texture. So let's dive into the UV editing window up here. This automatically puts us in edit mode and we see our texture here with its UV map. Just a note to remember the default blender shapes come with a UV map applied. With meshes you are creating out of nothing, you will have to create a UV map for them. This can be done in edit mode by selecting your entire mesh by clicking A and then clicking U to open the UV mapping menu. You can then select unwrap. So we'll cover this menu in more detail in a moment. Let's first just sort out our texture here. So I'm just going to turn on Material Preview in the 3D Modeling Workspace so that we can see what's happening. If I click A in the UV Editing menu, I can select the entire UV map. If I move the UV map around with the G key, you can see that it moves the texture around on the mesh. So these UV islands, as we call them, are essentially like coordinates for mapping the texture to the 3D model. I can also click R to rotate it and S to scale it. I am going to click R and then 9, 0 to rotate it by 90 degrees. I can then scale it around until I get a fairly okay look. I can also scale on some of the axes similar to what we did before with 3D modeling. So this is rough UV editing just to introduce you into the concept of it and it's not very good practice to have the UV islands coming off the texture but this is just to give you an example of what we can do. There are multiple ways to unwrap a mesh. Blender has them predefined in the UV mapping menu when we click U. So let's go through all of these one by one. Unwrap just does a general unwrap of the mesh whilst taking seams into account. So I'm just going to quickly explain seams to you. Down here you have the ability to mark a seam. So a seam basically marks the edge of a texture where the texture becomes discontinued basically. So you would probably use this on the corners of a mesh like a cube for example or if you've got clothes where maybe there's seams in the clothes for example, for a shirt, you might have a seam around the shoulders, so you'd mark a seam there. To mark a seam, you can come into edge select mode, and if we just select these lines, these edges here, for example, I can either right click and mark a seam, or I can click U to mark the seam here. The edges become red, which means it has become a seam. So if we were to unwrap this again, you can see that it is unwrapped whilst taking the seam into account. So it's basically split the mesh open with this line being the centerpiece. I could also add another seam here and unwrap again. And it's given us a bit of a tidier UV space now. If you want to clear the seams, you can select the edges and then select clear seam. Or if you want to get rid of all of the seams on the mesh, you can just select the entire mesh and then do clear seam. 
The next option we have here is Live Unwrap. All this does is it makes changes to the UV maps automatically when you change things around or create a scene. So for example, with Live Unwrap enabled, if I was to mark a seam again, you can see that it's automatically changed the UV map. So you don't have to unwrap it manually each time. Smart UV Project creates a UV map of the mesh that is based on the angles of your 3D model, which can be very handy for more complex shapes. So it basically tries to calculate the seams for you. With some of our options here, you can choose at what angle it will make the cuts or how close you want the UV islands to be to each other. So if I increase this value, it will leave a bit more space between each UV island. If I click OK, you can see what it's done here. Based on the angles that we had set, it split that on the mesh and made them separate UV islands. If I was to come back to it and increase the angle limit, you see we've got less islands. The next option is Light Map Pack. This just creates a separate UV island for each face on your mesh. You can choose to just unwrap the selected faces or all faces. And if you are unwrapping more than one mesh, you can make them share a UV map with this option ticked or you can give them their own UV maps. This UV mapping method is mostly used in game development where you have a static mesh which will be lit using baked lighting. I won't get into too much detail of that as that will be covered in a whole different tutorial series of its own. These other UV options work on different algorithms to give you different results. Follow active quads will follow the UVs of the active face. I may cover this in more detail in another video as it's not so important for this tutorial series. And then you have cube projection, cylinder projection and sphere projection. These UV options just try to unwrap your mesh based on the shape projection. So you would use cube projection to create a UV map for a cube object and sphere projection for a spherical object. Project from view just creates a UV map based on the current view in your 3D viewport. So for example, if I just click this, you can see it's literally just taken our camera position in 3D viewport and it's just projecting it. So if I come down here, project from view, see what it's doing. And then project from view bounds just does the same thing, but it scales the UV map so that it covers the bounds of the grid here. And that's really it for those UV options. Let's just quickly go for the user interface of our UV editing window here. So on the left here, you have most of the general options which we have covered before, but we also have some unique tools for UV editing. So the rip region tool here allows us to basically unstitch a part of the UV map. So by default, if I selected this face here, for example, and I use the G key to move it around, it's connected to everything. With the rip region tool selected, if I now come to this face and hold down the left mouse button, you can see that I can essentially pull away these faces. The grab tool allows you to move the UV map around using a radius. You can customize the radius and its strength using the sliders up here. Then you have the relax tool which morphs the UV map around and just relaxes the UV map. And then you have the pinch tool, which just pinches a selection of UVs together. Up here, we have the UV sync selection tool. By default, the UV editor will only show the UVs of the geometry you have selected in the 3D viewport. So if I was to unselect the monkey head, you can see that nothing appears. If I click this UV sync selection, it will show the UV map at all times. And then next to that, we have our usual selection modes with the vertex select, edge select, and face select. So before we move on, let's quickly talk about texture stretching, which is a very common issue when it comes to UV editing. If you are not careful with your UV mapping, you may get cases where the texture is stretched, like you can see in some places here. 
This can be avoided by spending a bit more time on your UV mapping and creating seams where you need them. A couple of tricks you can use to sort out any stretching is to select the UV map here and then you can come up to the UV menu and then select minimize stretch or in some cases you may need to apply the transforms to your mesh so in object mode you can come to object apply all transforms don't worry too much about this transforms thing yet I will cover it in more detail on another video but I just wanted to quickly show you the different ways to minimize stretching on UV maps if you get them. So in summary, I won't lie to you. UV mapping isn't the easiest thing in 3D modeling. It can be quite technical and it is one of those things that you become more experienced with as you start to use it yourself on your own 3D models. In future videos, we will be creating more complex 3D models to showcase different UV mapping methods. But for now, try playing around with it yourself and apply UV maps to your own custom 3D models. There are ways we can do materials and texturing without concerning ourselves too much with UV mapping, but that is something for another tutorial series as that goes down a completely different approach of the material process, which will also involve other software. If you are still a little bit confused with elements of UV mapping, don't worry, that is normal. There is also plenty of content online if you want to look into UV mapping into a bit more detail. So I just wanted to showcase the workflow of UV editing a bit better and uh, give you an actual example. So here I have a table. It's quite a simple one, nothing impressive. Um, there's a couple of things I just want to change with this table. One of them being, if you look down here on the table legs, the texture is a bit warped. So what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to turn on the UV sync selection so we have everything showing at all times. Uh, we just want the table legs. I'm just going to come down here and alt click and then shift alt click the bottom of these table legs and I'm just going to mark a seam. and then I can do A to select everything and then do an unwrap and you can see the texture starts to discontinue although it's starting to look a bit warped up here so what I'm going to do is add another seam uh, to the inside parts of these table legs um, the reason I'm picking the inside is when you're doing seams, and this is an important thing to know for game development as well, you want to try and do the seams in places where the player, or if it's architectural visualization, where the uh, viewer won't see it as easily. So you want to put seams in the inside of places where the camera won't really show you, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is mark the seams here, but first of all, I'm going to come to the UV mapping menu and I'm actually just going to turn on live unwrap so that these changes happen automatically. So now if we just select the inside of these table legs and then mark them as seams, you can see our textures don't look a lot better. I'm also just going to apply a seam to these bottom parts here of the table legs because I think another seam could form there as well and there we go the UV editing uh, window or UV map here is looking a lot tidier and the texture is looking a lot better on our mesh now so there you go that was just a very simple example but it just shows you the workflow with what you can do with unwrapping and seams. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you. In the next video we're going to go into more detail about the materials and textures in Blender. I know we covered that a little bit in the beginner tutorial series but this time we're going to go into a lot more depth. So I will see you then.